Hey guys, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Shitic and on this channel we talk about robotics, academia and research. In today's video, I'd like to talk about one of very important topics if you're an early stage researcher, which is literature review, database creation and management. Back when I was doing my PhD a couple of years ago, um, I was using some of the manual tools, right? So I used to print out the papers, um, scribble some notes on them, uh, stack them up on my desk. And that was my way of creating the database and arranging it. Um, as you would imagine, that's not really the most convenient and most uh, search friendly way to do it. I have a photographic memory, so for me it works, but I don't expect everybody to be comfortable with doing it that way, right? And anyways, it's the 21st century and uh, we should be more digital. So in today's video, I'd be talking about, you know, a couple of different ways on, of how you can do it. And also be talking about a tool that I have recently started using for project management. And it's quite useful also for literature review. So option number one is to create an Excel file could be a Google Sheet, could be the Microsoft Excel or any sort of spreadsheet like that. So you can, can put everything in a table or format and uh, that's pretty much your database. Option number two, which is what I started doing towards the end of my PhD was uh, uh, to start preparing the list of references directly in your thesis. Um, in the early days, I did not spend a lot of time writing down everything about the, the literature, but, you know, scribble some couple of words and put the citation in there so that it starts to make the list of references at the end of my thesis. Option number three, which is something that I started to like even more now, uh, because it's, uh, it allows you a lot more flexibility and it's uh, arranging of things, um, is the tool called Notion, which is what I'm going to show you uh, on my screen today. Um, so this is a template I created for literature review for um, can be customized by anyone. Um, I'll be sharing the link to this template in the description box down below. So feel free to make a copy of this template on your own computers and edit it and modify it as in uh, how you like it, right? Um, the way this template is structured is I'm assuming you're, you're writing your thesis in LaTeX. Right. Um, this could easily be changed if you're writing your thesis in MS Word or uh, EndNote or any other software of that sort. Uh, the only thing that changes is the way you record your reference entry. Right. Um, so let's quickly look at uh, what the columns are in this table and how it can uh, help us out with uh, database creation and management. Right. So first things first is the publication title. Right, so you, you can copy paste this from the, the paper that you're reading and put that in here. Second, very important thing is the author. So I'm using my own paper as an example here, um, but you can very well, you know, when you're taking this template, uh, change it however you like. Third thing is the article type I want to keep track of, whether it's a journal, a conference paper, a workshop paper, uh, a book chapter, or any other sort of publication, because that's very important when you're citing the literature and, you know, calling something a state of the art. Um, so you want it to be published at a good uh, venue, maybe a good journal, a good conference or things like that. So uh, just another tool to keep track of. Then the publication date. And we'll get to this in just a second, why having the dates are very important, right? Um, then here uh, for LaTeX, if you're familiar with LaTeX, you have to use a, a bib entry. So you can already start preparing your bib database here, right? So when you're writing your thesis, you just copy paste the bib entries from here and use the site key to, to cite the reference. Then there are a couple of keywords of what this research was about. So for example, I was doing mobile robotics, range estimation, and a few other things that explain what this research was about, right? So research keywords. Next thing here is a concept summary. So you could, uh, these are basically the, the notes you want to scribble, right? So you could kind of summarize what was done in the paper and what were your thoughts about the work in here as a sort of uh, brief text description in your own words. Um, then you could also keep a direct URL. So you could kind of quickly access the paper um, as and when you need it. And sometimes we also want to have the information of the corresponding authors. Um, maybe there is some information that's not clear to you, or if you want access to something that you think you would need to connect with the first author. So this could be something useful, right? Um, these are the kind of columns that I have found uh, are kind of relevant to most of us. So I prepared them, but it doesn't stop you from adding more columns. So just go on this plus icon here um, and you get a lot of options, right? So what kind of column do you want? Do you want the text, a number, a drop down menu, 
a, a date. Um, you could have an attachment, so you could use the files and media. Um, could be a checkbox, so if you want to make like a mini to-do list embedded here. URL is what I'm using for the direct link. Email is what I'm using for the corresponding author. And a bunch of other options here, which you can kind of, you know, um, decide what you want that column to be. So um, that I'm going to delete this column because we're not using it, right? Um, now quickly going back to this article type, right? So why I created this article type is because it allows me to filter out. So this database with respect to this keyword that I have put here, it's called a tag in the language of Notion, right? Um, so obviously there is only one article here at the moment, but as you can see, you could add conferences, workshops, a whole bunch of things. So for a thesis, you could have hundreds of references in here. Um, and what you could do then is to go to this filter option and create a filter. So let's say I'm making a filter that filters out based on article type. And that should be, so these are the options that I have already set up. You could add more options. And I want to see only the journal articles. And you see, suddenly that conference option has gone and it's going to show me all the journals that are here. Currently, there's only one. Um, I'm going to delete this filter for now because uh, I don't need it anymore, right? Um, there is also this uh, sort option, which allows you to sort publications based on dates. Um, so ascending, descending, however you want it. So there is a sort option. As you can see, this row is now back here. So for instance, I'm making another uh, entry in here for a paper that was from 2012. As soon as I hit enter, as you see, it's already sorted and it's gone up there. Um, and if this was in 2021, voila, it's down here. So it will automatically sort things out for you. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, you know, the, the formula we have in uh, Google spreadsheets. Here it's a bit more convenient and, and fast track. Um, so I, I find it really useful for people who are not really that familiar with making filters and using formulae with Google spreadsheet. Here is just like a press of a button and most of the things are done for you. Having said that, if you want a custom formula to do something, um, you can very well do that um, in, in here. So for example, when you're making a, a new entry, you can see down here, there is this option for a formula. So you could compute a formula uh, depending on some other entry, some other column and filter things out and do a whole bunch of things. So uh, that's completely possible. So we just saw how you can filter things out based on the tags, right? So if you want to see only journal articles, conference articles, uh, and we saw how you can sort things out. Another cool thing that you can do in here is to uh, drag a column and move it around. So for instance, right after the title, you want to see the type of the article and not the authors first. You can drag and drop it here and suddenly the, the columns are rearranged. So that's completely flexible. Um, you can arrange the width and of the things. Um, and also, one more thing, um, you see this suddenly this option open pops up, right? As soon as I um, hover over the title, as you open this, it will open this article as a page. Now, what this means is you'll have all the entries of the table for that corresponding article. And I've also set up this reader's note section here. Now, what this means is instead of scribbling stuff on the actual printout of the document or even annotating a PDF, you could de definitely do that, but you could also embed that here, right? So you could write some notes about introduction, motivation, whatever they were doing, some uh, limitations of the details of the methods, limitations of the methods, things that were clear, not clear, uh, limitations, future works. Um, anything and everything that you would think of uh, either scribbling or annotating on an actual manuscript of this work, you could always uh, kind of make notes here, uh, put text in bold, add links, do a whole bunch of things here as well. So it's like all clustered together in one place, right? Um, and like this, you'll have your own database that you could add filters. It's automatically sorted. Um, you could uh, see two different views. Another thing that I've done for you guys already is I've set up two different views, right? So currently the default view is a tabular format. So if this is a table, uh, that's a table view. You could also see a list view like this. So instead of uh, showing you untitled for the two articles that we were experimenting with where there was no details, but let's say this was the article that you want, right? Um, so it's gonna show you a list format of everything as opposed to the <laughs> full table. And here you can decide what properties you want shown. So do you want to see the article type as well? Then it will show you those tags. 
Um, do you want to see the publication date or not? You can toggle that. Um, anything else that you want to see here, that will appear here. Um, if you want things to be sorted, yeah, your fil sorts and filters are available here as well. So if you want only journal articles seen, only date seen, and all those kind of things. So as a quick recap, uh, you have two views. Um, table view is the default view, has a bunch of columns, super modular, drag and drop things around, can even open that article as a page, um, scribble corresponding reader's notes for that article, um, there is also an option to upload a file here. So as I was talking about files and media, just in case if you want to upload, let's say PDFs, uh, corresponding images or stuff. Uh, but remember if you're using this um, account or notion from your personal email, you have a certain limit to how much you can do that, right? Um, the other way around that is if you are a student watching this video and you want like a premium account, uh, but you don't uh, have the budget for going for the pro plan, you have a benefit of signing up for the student account by using your uh, university affiliated email. So if you have your official at university.com uh, or whatever email, use that to create an account on Notion. And then in the pricing plans, you'll have an option to apply the discount, which is free upgrade for students. And if you use that, you have a whole bunch of other options that you have access to all of a sudden. Um, and Notion is catered towards doing that for students, right? Um, just to view the template, you don't need an account. So if you're watching this video um, and you just want to see what all options I have, um, you can click on the link that I'm going to share down in the description below. It will open up the template for you and you can just, you know, look through it. It will not allow you to make any edits or, or drag and drop or anything of that sort, but you'll have the things in front of you. Uh, as and when you decide to make a copy of the template or to start customizing the template, um, you can, you would then need an account, right? So if you're a student, as I told you, it, you're going to be better off if you make an account from your university email account and upgrade to a premium account and uh, comment down below if you have any, any comments or suggestions or anything else that you'd like to know about uh, managing and creating a literature review database. Um, feel free to like and share this video with, uh, with your fellows um, who would benefit from this and who are still kind of, you know, in the early days of the literature review, um, because as this database grows, you want to be on top of things and it can spiral out of control very easily. It would mean a lot to me if you could like, share and subscribe to my channel as well, um, so that you're notified as soon as the next video goes live. Um, hope you found this useful and have a nice day.